Go back to World War I now. Now, what got us into World War I? If you asked an historian, they'd give a number of different provocations, the Zimmerman note, but probably the incident that was most inflammatory to the public was the sinking of the Lusitania. Now, the Lusitania was a British passenger ship on its way from New York to England, 1915. At that time, England was at war with Germany, but we had not yet joined World War I. Well, the ship went down, and the Americans were told that the Germans simply sank this ship to be ruthless. They saw an innocent passenger ship, wanted to kill a lot of women and children, and so down it went. But that's not why the Germans sank it. They sank it because the Lusitania was loaded from one end to the other with munitions, millions of rounds of ammunition and many other munitions. Everyone who su survived that disaster said there were two explosions, a smaller one and then a huge one. The small one was a torpedo hitting. The large one was the munitions detonating. The ship went down in just 18 minutes after a single torpedo hit. By the way, that's confirmed also by the logbook of the sub that sank. Lusitania, the U-20's logbook, said one torpedo followed by massive explosion. Equally significant, before the tragedy, Winston Churchill, who was then head of the British Admiralty, had ordered a study to be done to determine what the political impact would be if a British passenger ship was sunk with Americans on board. And there were almost 200 Americans on board the Lusitania. And prior to the sinking of the Lusitania, an exchange took place between Sir Edward Gray, the British foreign minister, and Edward Mandel House, who was President Woodrow Wilson's top advisor. Here's the exchange of communications. Gray, what will America do if the Germans sink an ocean liner with American passengers on board? House's reply, I believe that a flame of indignation would sweep the United States, and that by itself would be sufficient to carry us into the war. Joseph Kenworthy, who was then in British Naval Intelligence, Commander Kenworthy, said this, The Lusitania was deliberately sent at a considerably reduced speed into an area where a U-boat was known to be waiting and with their escorts withdrawn. Why does he say, how can he say a U-boat was known to be waiting? Well, the British in 1915 had cracked Germany's naval codes, and they knew the approximate location of every U-boat at that time in the British Isles. They also knew the location of the U-boat, the U-20, by uh, reports of its recent activities. Now, in the United States, an official hearing investigation was, uh, was uh, carried into looking into the sinking of Lusitania. But at that hearing, officials were only allowed to see a dummy manifest that omitted the ship's munitions. The original manifest that listed the munitions was ordered by President Woodrow Wilson to be hidden in the archives of the U.S. Treasury. Now, hearing this, some of you might think, well, uh, Mr. Perloff, isn't that just sort of a conspiracy theory? Isn't that pretty wild stuff? Actually, almost everything I just said has already been on the History Channel. In the documentary In Search of the Lusitania, you can read about it in the book The Lusitania by a British historian, Colin Simpson, or in Room 40, which came out more recently by Patrick Beasley. Now, Beasley is a former officer in British naval intelligence, and he's considered the world's leading authority on the history of British naval intelligence. Here's what he writes in his book. I am reluctantly driven to the conclusion that there was a conspiracy, his words, to put the Lusitania at risk in the hopes that even an abortive attack on her would bring the United States into the war. All right, let's kick it back in history one more time now to the Spanish-American War. Now, what was the event? That